Hi there, my name is David. Today I'm gonna to be talking about client onboarding. I'll start with a brief introduction and then I'm gonna be discussing the importance of a solid client onboarding process. I'll talk about defining that process and then I'm gonna show you a number of tools which you can use to deliver that stellar onboarding. And these will be a mix of both free and paid applications. I'll start with a brief introduction. Uh, my name is David Caro. No, I am not a model for plaid Costco shirts. Actually, I'm a solutions consultant at Thomson Reuters. I started my career just over a decade ago at Thomson Reuters, doing technical support for our tax product, DT Max. Some of you might be familiar with it. And this is where I cut my teeth in the industry. I spent a few tax seasons helping out customers and troubleshooting their technical problems. Afterwards, I joined the sales team where I advised clients on our various product offerings. Then after a few years, I ended up leaving Thomson Reuters to join a small boutique tax and accounting firm. There I was responsible for business development, sales, marketing, and I did some IT consulting as well. Then in 2019, I rejoined Thomson Reuters for my current position where I help firms grow and scale their business. Okay, with that out of the way, Let's talk a little bit about the importance of having a clear and efficient onboarding process. Now you might be asking yourself, well, hey, if I'm amazing at what I do, why should I really care about the onboarding? Okay, fair enough. Let's imagine the following scenario. There's this friendly neighborhood accounting firm known for being great with numbers. And they were about to bring in a new client, a small bakery owner who needed some help with their tax and accounting needs. But during the onboarding, things didn't go so smoothly. The accounting firm was disorganized and forgot to explain what they were gonna do, how they'd communicate, or what the client should expect. They didn't provide any kind of clear checklist for sharing financial information. And there was no mention of when they might meet up. The bakery owner felt overwhelmed and unsure about how things would pan out. The onboarding process was a bit of a mess and it left the client anxious and questioning whether the accounting firm was up to the task of handling their business. Now, in this situation, the accounting firm's poor onboarding process shook the client's confidence and created misunderstandings. The client might start thinking about looking elsewhere for their tax and accounting needs even if that initial firm had a solid reputation. This just goes to show that a poor client onboarding experience can really sabotage a working relationship, even if the firm is otherwise very competent. First impressions are paramount during the onboarding process. You only get one first impression. They set the tone for the entire business relationship. A positive initial encounter establishes both trust and credibility, making clients more receptive to your services and advice. It can also alleviate any apprehensions or doubts they might have had, ensuring a smoother and more collaborative partnership. Conversely, a negative first impression can raise red flags, erode confidence, and even lead to client dissatisfaction or mistrust. Therefore, focusing on creating a strong first impression during client onboarding is essential for building that foundation of trust and fostering a successful long-term professional relationship. You just got a notification stating that your client has accepted your proposal. Nice. They didn't even try to negotiate the pricing. Hey, that's sweet. Okay, now the fun begins. It's time to roll out the red carpet for your new client. Okay, what's the first step? Well, that's why it's important to have a game plan. You wanna have your processes mapped out. You don't wanna just wing it, trust me, it's not a good idea. Take the time to map out your onboarding process. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect from the onset. You'll be making iterations as you go over time. It's important to know that your onboarding process likely won't be a one-size-fits-all either. 
It'll look different for different types of engagements and different client types. For example, you might have one onboarding process for your personal tax clients and a totally different process for your corporate clients. You'll also want to determine who at your firm is responsible for each part of the onboarding process. Now, why might you want to have that standardized, documented onboarding process? Well, by doing so, you'll benefit from the following. Consistency. A standardized onboarding process ensures that all clients receive the same level of service and experience, promoting consistency in your firm's operations. Efficiency. It streamlines the initial client engagement, making the onboarding process more efficient and less time consuming for your team. This can help you serve more clients effectively. Risk mitigation. By including risk assessment and compliance checks in the onboarding process, you can identify and address potential issues early, reducing the risk of legal and regulatory problems down the line. Quality control. Standardized onboarding helps maintain a high standard of service and ensures that clients' needs are properly assessed and addressed. Clarity. Provides clarity for clients by setting expectations, detailing the services they will receive and explaining the working relationship. This in turn reduces misunderstandings and disputes. Relationship building. The onboarding process is an opportunity to start building a strong client relationship from day one. It shows your commitment to understanding their unique financial needs and providing tailored solutions. Data security. You can incorporate data security and confidentiality measures into the onboarding process, assuring clients that their sensitive financial information will always be protected. Automation. Standardized processes can be more easily automated, reducing manual work and potential errors in client data entry and management. Cross-selling opportunities. During onboarding, you can identify additional services or opportunities that may benefit the client, enabling cross-selling and upselling. Hopefully by now I've convinced you that it's a good idea to have a standardized documented onboarding plan. Now from here, I'd like to share some onboarding best practices drawn from my experience working at a small boutique tax and accounting firm. Where do we start? Well, I would argue that the onboarding process doesn't begin after the contract is signed, but rather prior to that, specifically during the sales process. Now at the firm that I worked for, the process looked something like this. So a prospect would go to our website and fill out a form, which I would then receive by email. Next, I would conduct a discovery call with the prospect to qualify the lead, understand their needs. Then I would add them to our CRM. Then we would send out a proposal. Once accepted, we would send out a questionnaire, schedule a kickoff call with one of the partners, and add their projects to our project tracking software. Client then would be added to our tax softwares, accounting softwares, and we would then set them up with a portal. And we would schedule regular check-ins with the client. We would use a client portal to deliver the services and invoice the client. And then finally, if everything went according to plan, we'd ask them to write us a review on Google or other social networking websites. As I just mentioned, the onboarding process really begins during the sales process, as this will be a potential client's first touch point with your firm. The sales process should be divided into two components, the discovery meeting and the proposal meeting. Now, let's talk about the discovery call. The discovery call is where you get to know more about your prospect and their business needs and to determine if you guys are a good fit for each other. It's an opportunity to vet them and find out what kind of a client they might end up being and seeing if this is a person you want to do business with. Now, if you jump on a call and the person's a hot mess and they seem totally disorganized, they might not be that fun and enjoyable to work with. The discovery call is just as much you vetting them as they're vetting you. So it's important that there's alignment. Otherwise, 
you can be in for a world of misery and pain. Make sure to work with folks who are aligned with your values. Now, here's a tip. Be sure to take charge during the process. You want to show up as an equal and a professional, not someone who's desperate for work. Take charge of the call. Be the one to lead the conversation. Remember, you're trying to learn more about them. Now, this doesn't mean being rude or arrogant. You want to let them talk, talk about their needs, talk about themselves. You need to get a good idea about who they are and what they want. Now, this is an excellent time to ask them about their budget. I really recommend doing this. If it's way off base from what you charge, that's okay. You might not be a good fit and it's gonna save you a lot of time. It'll also help you sort of gauge where they're at so you don't sticker shock them with a quote that's much higher than they had otherwise expected. Okay, after the discovery call, provided we have a good fit, we can send out a proposal where you're gonna outline the pricing, the timeline, articulate the value that you bring to the table. Ideally, you'll wanna go over this proposal with them live, either over the phone or in person. One thing I really don't recommend doing is just sending them a proposal to their email. The inbox is where proposals go to die. Now, ideally, you'll wanna look at using a professional proposal software, such as Ignition. Otherwise, you can create a PDF or use something like Canva. I'm gonna expand on that when we take a look at the tools portion of my presentation. By sending out a professional proposal, you'll establish credibility and your conversion rate is gonna be way higher. Now that we've covered the importance of a solid onboarding process, I'd like to share some of the tools that will help you along the way as you onboard your clients. And these tools are gonna be relevant whether you're doing mostly just T1 type clients or if you're working with corporate clients as well. Let's start with a customer relationship management or CRM. A CRM is gonna be core to any organization which engages in sales. And if you're looking to grow your firm and fatten your bottom line, you gotta have a CRM in place. A CRM and a thoughtful sales strategy is gonna help you both in the quantity of clients that you bring in, but will also help with the quality of clients that you bring in. So even if you're not necessarily looking to take on tons of new customers, a CRM will help you narrowly focus on the highest quality of customer. I'm talking about the clients who are fun to work with, are low maintenance, and pay you on time. Now, implementing a CRM to your accounting firm will offer numerous advantages. Let's go through them. Lead and prospect management. A CRM helps you track and manage potential clients and leads, allowing you to nurture relationships and convert leads into paying clients more effectively. You can assign and prioritize leads and set reminders for follow-ups and analyze lead data to make informed decisions on which prospects to pursue. Sales pipeline visibility. With a CRM, you gain a clear view of your sales pipeline. You can track the progress of client engagements from initial contact all the way through proposal and closing stages. This visibility enables better forecasting and resource allocation. Cross-selling and upselling. A CRM can help you identify opportunities for offering additional services to your existing customers. And by understanding their needs and past interactions, you can introduce relevant services, increasing revenue and client satisfaction. Performance analytics. CRMs provide detailed analytics and reporting on sales activities, client interactions, and the performance of your sales team. These insights enable data-driven decision-making and help you fine-tune your sales strategies. These advantages can result in increased revenue, improved client relationships, and more effective sales strategies. All right, let's check out our CRM in action here. Uh, for this example, I'm gonna be using HubSpot. It's got a ton of functionality, even at the free um, subscription base. So I went ahead and I created a quick HubSpot account. And from this point, we can go ahead and populate deals into the CRM. Let's do a quick example. So let's assume uh, that we did a discovery call 
with a client who needs some help with their year end work. And they might be a good fit for us to do, um, you know, their notice to reader. Okay, sounds good. So I'm going to go ahead and create a deal here. And so we'll call this um, year end for our client, make up a client. We'll call it uh, Dave's uh, Auto Shop. And we're going to say that right now this client is qualified to buy. This is going to be a $3,000 deal, just kind of making things up as we go along. I anticipate to close this um, you know, on the 24th. And this is going to apply to new business. We're not adding services to an existing client. And then we can go ahead and add that to our CRM. And as we work the opportunity through the sales cycle, we can do things like track calls and interactions. And then we can always, always reference that at a later date to see where we're at for any given deal. All right, now I'm gonna go back to my deals board over here. And it's going to partition these deals and segment them based on where they're at in the sales cycle. Um, so maybe we're moving a deal along the sales cycle here. And we sent them a proposal. We can slide it over here. The client liked what they saw. Now this deal has been moved over to one. And it's now a closed deal. Or hopefully this doesn't happen too much, but maybe... We found out it wasn't a good fit and the deal was closed out. Um, and then later on, we can check out dashboards and reporting uh, and we can see all kinds of different interesting metrics to see, you know, what our conversion rates are. Um, we can do forecasting. We can check out our pipelines. So a CRM is a really good handy tool to have uh, just to manage the sales at your firm. Okay, now let's imagine that you had a productive discovery call with a prospect and you've established a good fit. Excellent. It's time to send out a proposal. Now, earlier, I mentioned that the inbox is where deals go to die. Don't get me wrong. Email is a wonderful tool for communicating. But when it comes to sending a proposal, there are much better options available. Now, one of the first tools that I incorporated into my tech stack back at my old firm was a proposal application. Why? Well, because a proposal software will offer professionalism. You can embed marketing collateral into proposals that are visually pleasing, showcasing your brand and your professionalism. It'll also offer you tracking and analytics, so you'll be able to see when your prospect has opened a proposal, allowing you to prioritize your follow-ups. Content management. Now, rather than building each proposal from scratch in your inbox, you can build a proposal library, allowing you to construct a proposal in just a few clicks. It'll offer e-signatures. Now, when it comes to landing a client, you got to take all the friction away. E-signatures makes it easy for your clients to agree to your proposal and to buy from you. Proposal application will yield higher conversion rates. A good proposal will establish value and credibility before showing them that price, and it'll make you appear more professional. By doing so, clients will be far more likely to decide to buy from you. Remember, high quality clients don't just grow on trees. You cannot afford to scare them away with underwhelming email proposals. Now, if a proposal application isn't in your budget, that's okay. Nothing's stopping you from creating visually pleasing PDFs, which showcases your branding, and in turn will be a step up from that basic email. Now I'm gonna show you how you can use Ignition, a proposal application that has partnered with Thomson Reuters to create a compelling proposal in just a few mere seconds. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to create a proposal using Ignition. Uh, in this case, we're gonna select a client who will work with Bob's Hot Dogs. Now we're gonna just grab some services from our content library. Um, so I can go ahead and add more services as needed. Uh, in this case, we've added some uh, accounting, some bookkeeping up to a thousand transactions. We're going to do the year end and I included a T1 in there. The corresponding prices will show up here on the 
right side, side of the screen. I can go always add more services uh, if I'd like to. That's not a problem. Next, payments. Now, Ignition is going to handle the payments for you as well. Uh, really cut down on all that uh, accounts receivable headache. So we can enable uh, payments being required or not. In this case, we won't. Um, but either way, we're going to give the opportunity for the clients to pay uh, and include their credit card details or their banking information. Again, this is going to automate things and also make the process easy for your customer. Next, we're going to include our engagement letter. And we can have a library of different engagement letters depending on you know what services we're providing or what kind of clients we're dealing with. And what's cool about this is that Ignition will automatically enter the correct year end date if that's something that's referenced in the engagement letter. So you don't have to, if you were using like a Word document, uh, go in there, find the references to the year end or the corporate name and copy and paste. It's gonna do that all automatically for us. Next, the presentation step. So here we have an opportunity to add marketing collateral to our proposal. Uh, we can do things like embed a video, add a brochure. Uh, and the idea here is to showcase our branding and really articulate our professionalism for our firm. Once we're satisfied, we're gonna go ahead and send this proposal via email. So now the client is gonna get an email with a link. And when they click on that link, it's gonna bring them to the proposal. So the first thing they're gonna see is a video. My firm, we invested a little bit of marketing dollars here, created a slick video. The client's looking at this. Hey, these guys look great. Then they'll be able to see the brochure. And again, the idea here is that we're establishing a lot of value upfront, right? Contrast this to just if I sent out an email. If I just sent out an email saying, this is what I'll do for you and this is the price, what's the client gonna do? They're gonna look right at the price first thing and then they might get sticker shock. And you know that might that price might be difficult to digest if we haven't built up enough value yet for the client. So here the client can see the brochure uh, and it's gonna provide context about my firm. You know, this is our story. This is how we're different. These are the services that our firm offers. Here's a testimonial from a satisfied client. Again, we're establishing credibility. Meet some of our team. Now let's get into the nuts and bolts. So here, the client is gonna see the services that our firm is proposing. Um, and you'll notice this is very detailed. Why is that? Two reasons. One, if we explicitly spell out what the firm is doing, what the firm is not doing, and what the client is responsible for, that's gonna remove all doubt and it's gonna mitigate scope creep. Secondly, but by being very detailed, we're gonna establish a lot of value. The client's gonna see, wow, these guys are actually doing a lot of work for me. That might help justify that premium price that we're charging for our premium services. And it's only now that we're getting to the pricing. Now that we've built up a lot of value. Okay, this is what it's gonna cost me every month, plus a one-time fee, that seems reasonable. Here I can go ahead and enter in my payment details. Again, one of the rules of one of the first rules of sales, you gotta make it easy for your clients to buy from you. Okay, this looks terrific. Now I can see the engagement letter and I'm more than happy to sign on. So if I refer back to my previous slide, I've shown you a few applications and tools, best practices to execute the pre-sale side of a stellar onboarding. Now let's look at a few tools that we can leverage for the post-sale part of the onboarding. So just to recap, so far we've used a CRM to track our sales and leads, and our client has accepted our professional looking proposal. Um, at this point, well, we need to go ahead and deliver those services. So as we continue to add more projects, we're needing a little bit of help keeping track of all the work that we're delivering to all of our customers. The last thing we wanna do is for a project to slip between the cracks. Um, for compliance projects, you know, this can mean penalties to be paid for late filing. This is where a project management tool can be handy as it's gonna provide workflow management. 
Uh, so project management tools can help you organize and track the various tasks and processes involved in uh, you know, our different services. Uh, this can ensure that work is assigned, uh, tracked, and completed efficiently, reducing the risk of tasks, again, slipping through the cracks. A project management tool will help with uh, time tracking and billing. So many project management tools offer time tracking features, uh, which are crucial for uh, tax and accounting firms that bill clients based on billable hours. These tools can help you accurately record and bill for the time spent on different projects. It'll also help with client communication. Uh, project management tools often include communication features, uh, email integration, uh, portals, document sharing, that sort of thing. It'll help with uh, task delegation as well. You can assign tasks, specific tasks to specific team members, set deadlines, uh, monitor progress, ensuring that everyone is accountable for their responsibilities and that projects are completed on time. And also provide document management. So project management tools can centralize document storage and sharing, making it easier to keep track of financial documents, reports, and other important files. Oftentimes, project management tools will include uh, reporting and analytics. Uh, this will be super useful when it comes to tracking the performance and profitability of your firm. You'll be able to identify bottlenecks and make data-driven dr decisions to improve efficiency at your firm. These tools also facilitate collaboration and teamwork uh, amongst your team members, uh, enabling them to work together on client projects, share insights, and provide real-time updates. It'll also help facilitate scalability at your firm. As your accounting tax and accounting firm grows, project management tools can help you manage a larger volume of clients and projects more efficiently without the need for significant increases in administrative overhead. Finally, it'll help with client satisfaction. Uh, by managing projects more efficiently, your tax and accounting firm can improve the quality of service and responsiveness to client needs, ultimately enhancing client satisfaction and loyalty. So with that in mind, let's take a look at one of the Thomson Reuters uh, project management tools. Specifically, we're gonna look at OnView. Now there's a number of different practice management tools available in the market. Today, I'm gonna use OnView firm management from Thomson Reuters to illustrate the value of having a practice management tool in place to deliver an effective onboarding. With a good practice management tool in place, you can execute a number of steps from your onboarding process, from tracking projects to client collaboration with portals to invoicing your customer. I'll start with the project management piece. And the reason it's so important to your onboarding process is because even if you nail all the other parts in your onboarding, but you miss a deadline because it's difficult to keep track of your due dates, well, your onboarding and subsequently your reputation is gonna be dead on arrival, right? So let's take a look at how we can use OnVio to track your projects. Now, what we'll do at the onset is we're gonna create project templates in the system. And projects are simply just the various services that you offer your customers. They might be things like a T1, um, notice to reader, bookkeeping, that sort of thing. I'll go ahead and simply add a project now to my list. So I can create a new client, but maybe I'm gonna add some work to an existing client. Today, I might focus on Dean Turner here. And in Dean's case, we're gonna do his T1. And we'll just take a look. Yeah, sure, that seems like a reasonable due date. Why not? And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and save it and add it to our work queue. Okay, so now it's gonna be added to my list of projects. I'll mention that a lot of firms, initially at least, will use something like Excel to track their due dates. That's totally reasonable. Um, but as you scale and grow your firm, it might be a good idea to adopt a dedicated practice management solution, something that's gonna scale with your firm, um, a central sort of database of truth for all of your projects, which will eliminate errors and really make it easy, easy for you to understand where you're at with all your projects. To illustrate my point, here I have my work queue and I can easily customize the layout here by adding and removing columns as needed. 
uh, and I can slide them around to suit my visual preference. The way I've constructed it, I wanna see who's the client, what kind of work are we doing? What's the status of said project? Who's responsible at my firm to complete the work? And I wanna know when it's due. Now with that in mind, you might ask yourself some questions as a firm owner or managing partner. You might wanna know, hey, what are the priorities this week? So we can group our projects. Example, I can see that this week I have one project to complete. The subsequent week I have four projects, et cetera. I can do the same thing for my staff. So maybe I wanna get a sense of everybody's capacity at my firm. I can take the primary column here and I can see that, well, I got 15 projects on my plate and my colleague has seven. I can even mix and match criteria. So maybe I wanna narrow in um, on my staff's projects here. So I'm gonna take due date and then I can get an intimate sense of David's work here. I can see that specifically for David, he has two projects to complete this week, one for the following week, et cetera. Now, in addition to grouping, we can also filter it. Again, this is gonna help you answer questions that you might have with respect to the projects of your firm. Example, you might ask yourself, hey, Envio, can you show me my bookkeeping projects that are not yet started? Huh, interesting. And maybe in addition to that, show me my bookkeeping mandates that are not yet started, that I'm responsible for completing, and they're due this week or any custom date range. I don't happen to have any. If I did, they would dis be displayed here. This is where the filtering comes in really handy. Uh, alternatively, maybe you just wanna see a very broad view. Can you show me all the projects that are due this week? Or maybe you wanna just focus in on your T1 customers, again, that are assigned to a specific staff member. We can do all that with Onvio with the project management. As I mentioned earlier, we can also use a practice management tool for the collaborative parts of your onboarding process. For this, we can actually use the client center portals. One of the nice things about Onvio is it's going to be integrated with DTMAX. So imagine as this being part of your onboarding process, uh, in addition to all the stuff we've covered so far, you know, on the pre-sale side, um, on the project tracking, uh, we can also use the portals to deliver um, a questionnaire. Spoiler alert, that's something I'm gonna cover in a few moments. Uh, maybe we'll use the portals to deliver our projects as well. As an example, I'm gonna share the client copy with my customer, in this case, Dean. So now the system will send Dean an email letting him know his tax return is ready in his portal. Great. Let's think about other ways that we can offer that premium onboarding process. Well, we can do things like send out requests via the portal for e-signatures. Let's juxtapose that sort of experience for your customer uh, compared to I need you to come to my office and fight traffic and look for parking and come give me a, you know that physical signature. Uh, so we can go ahead and send off, in this case, a request for the T183. Okay, that's done. So now the client will get a couple of email notifications and let's actually see what the client sees from their perspective. So they've logged into the portal and now they can do things like navigate to their tax year and do things like access their tax return. Right, so they don't actually have to call you and say, oh, I lost my tax return. Can you email me another copy? They can just come in here and access it at their convenience where they can view it, print it, download it, that sort of thing. Undoubtedly, part of your onboarding process is gonna involve the exchange of files and documents. So your customer can use the portal to securely and safely share those files with you. They can just drag and drop from their desktop. Um, they can even grab specific files from other third-party cloud service 
providers like Google Drive, Dropbox, or Box.com. You'll also have the opportunity to electronically sign things like the authorization forms. Um, we can even send off a request to sign you know, your uh, engagement letters with Onvio. As you can see, very convenient from the customer's perspective. Great, and just like that, the client has signed the authorization form. They can download a copy with their signature. At the same time, the program is gonna send you a notification indicating that the client has signed their authorization form, and it's gonna save it for you in Onvio documents. Now the third component that Onvio can assist with when it comes to the onboarding involves sort of the tail end of that onboarding process, which is the invoicing. Very critical part of the onboarding process. You definitely don't want to forget to collect payments. We don't necessarily want to be doing all that hard work for free. So here I have some clients with a positive WIP work in progress. And we're going to quickly invoice our customer, in this case, our friend Dean for that T1 that we did. Great. We can mark it up, we can mark it down. Let's generate a quick preview to make sure we're satisfied with that invoice. That looks solid. So at this point, we're going to save it. And then we can print it. Although I suspect we'll want to save some trees, we'll email it, or we can even upload it to the client's portal. So now, as you can see, a good project management tool will cover a number of bases uh, as it pertains to your effective onboarding process. Regardless of the type of work that you're going to do for your customer, you're going to need to get some information from them. Uh, and one of the parts of your onboarding might include sending them a questionnaire to get said information. It's a good idea to take the time to formulate a questionnaire. This is going to help you understand your customer. It's going to help you gather that critical information. By having a detailed questionnaire, you're going to be able to improve efficiency at your firm. You're not going to be going back and forth. Oh, I forgot to ask you question you know, A, B, C, or gather document one, two, three from you. Do it all in one shot. It also help you avoid uh, forgotten required materials to complete your client's project. Terrific. So let's look at some tools that we can use to create a questionnaire uh, to fulfill that element of your onboarding process. So you're going to want to create a questionnaire. You don't have to start from scratch. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, in fact, we can use DT Max. Uh, the pro forma part of the tax return as a basis to create your own questionnaire. And just for reference, uh, in order to make that appear, we'd go to the client letter in DT Max and make sure we have uh, generate a separate pro forma questionnaire at the end. And we can use this, as I mentioned, as the basis to create your own uh, questionnaire to send over to your customer. Practically speaking, how are we going to build this questionnaire? You can create a fillable PDF, uh, and then take that PDF questionnaire and submit it to your client's portal. Here's another tool that we can use to quickly and efficiently create a questionnaire for your customer. In this case, I'm going to use a free tool. We're going to use Google Forms. Let's take a look and see how that works. All right, so I went ahead and I opened up my Google Drive, and now we're going to create a form to complete the questionnaire. Now, undoubtedly, you're going to have various questionnaires. You'll have maybe one for your personal tax clients. You might have a different uh, questionnaire for your corporate clients. Uh, the way it works is it's rather intuitive. We'll just go ahead and submit the questions that we need our clients to answer. So again, I might use the pro forma as a basis here. And so I'm going to go here and I'm going to type in name. And we can dictate what those answers look like or the format of those answers. So for name, we're gonna want a short answer, but we can also ask questions and get answers in the form of multiple choices or check boxes or drop down menus. 
uh, or even file uploads. I'll show you why that could be kind of cool. So we'll start with a name, short answer, then we'll go to surname, same idea, short answer. And then we'll ask another question, you know, maybe for to showcase, um, you know, the multiple choices here, we can ask for marital status and multiple choice and option number one, single, option two, uh, common law, option three, married, et cetera, et cetera. And so we can build that comprehensive questionnaire using Google Forms. Uh, we can even, as I mentioned earlier, request file uploads. So maybe you want your client to submit um, something like a prior year tax return. Please submit last year's tax return. And we'll specify that this is gonna be a file upload. Okay, and once we're completed that checklist, and I'm just gonna name it something generic like tax checklist, fantastic. We can go ahead and email this checklist to our customer now. So now I will just enter in uh, my own email, David Carroll at tr.com and hit the send button. And so now this checklist will have been sent to your client. They'll get that email notification, click the link. It'll bring them to the checklist. They'll go ahead and fill it out. And then you'll be able to see all the individual responses for all of your um, questionnaires that you've sent to all of your customers. So this is a great free tool for you to manage the collection of information um, as part of your onboarding process. During the onboarding process, you're gonna to wanna to meet with your customer. This might be an in-person meeting. Uh, it could be a virtual meeting as well. And so the next free or freemium tool that we're gonna look at to facilitate uh, those meetings is Calendly. Now I've connected Calendly to my Outlook calendar, but it supports other calendars as well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an events template. So here I'm calling it onboarding kickoff. I'm gonna use Microsoft Teams as my preferred meeting application, enter in a quick description. And now we're gonna send this off to my customer. So I'm gonna be meeting with my client, in this case, virtually through Microsoft Teams. So I'm gonna click on share. I'm gonna suggest some dates and times for my customer. Great, and then I'm gonna copy this to my clipboard. Then I'm gonna open up my Outlook, send off an email, and the client will receive the following email. So they have an opportunity to click on a time slot. It'll open up Teams here. And now they'll enter in their name, client's name. They'll enter in their email address. Maybe provide some additional context about the, the meeting and they'll be able to schedule it directly to my calendar. Great, so it's gonna confirm. The client can also save it to their Google or Outlook calendar as well. And then I'll get a notification letting me know that the client has selected a time slot and I'll be able to see my scheduled events subsequently. So this can be a great free tool to help facilitate uh, meeting times with your customer. As I wrap up for today, I'd like to do a quick recap of some of the ground that we covered during today's session. I discussed the importance of an effective client onboarding. As you recall, you really only have that one shot to make a positive first impression that'll dictate the tone for the business relationship. I spoke about the importance of taking the time to document and formalize your onboarding process as it'll facilitate consistency, scalability, efficiency, and help optimize client satisfaction. I then covered a number of tools that can, that can be used to deliver that killer onboarding experience for your customers. I hope that after watching today, there's at least one, if not a few best practices that you can incorporate at your firm. 
so that you can improve not only the efficiency, but also use the onboarding process as an opportunity to not only deliver for your clients, but also to really wow them and impress them. Finally, I want to thank you for spending time with us here today. And thank you for participating in another exciting edition of Synergy. We have a lot of great content on tap for you today, and I can't wait to show you what my colleagues have to share with you. My name is David Carroll, and I hope we connect again soon to help you grow and evolve your practice. Thanks again. Take care.